Welcome to the Jenna and Tosh Show. I'm Tosh Taylor. And I'm Jenna Morton. And today's guest is going to share so much inspiration with you. I am positive. I am, I always say I'm so excited, but I am. I I am so excited. I really need to like get out my thesaurus because I need a new word. But we are talking today with Amelie Breyer from Democracy Now. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And thank you for enthusiasm. <laughs> well, I am, I am so excited because I do have a little bit of sense of Democracy Now! And I have made it out to some of your programming before, but I think that this is going to be a first for a lot of our audience who are listening and watching. So let's start right there. Like, What is Democracy Now! Well, for Democracy Now, basically what we're trying to do is get women's voices heard and get women represented. And we're focusing on the political side of it. And so we're doing this through, uh, I think what you're referring to is our movie nights, which were a networking activity that we had. And currently we're running a campaign camp to get women to know the ins and outs of the campaign. Okay, perfect. Now the campaign thing started yesterday, um, or I should say the 19th, actually, because this isn't going to air until next week. But um, I want to know more before we get on to that. I want to know who's all involved in this. So in the campaign in itself or Femocracy Now as a whole, maybe I can start with how Femocracy started. Yeah. That's okay with you. Perfect. Uh, So the kickoff was really the provincial election. So that would would have been in September of uh, 2020. And there was a big push uh, to get more women candidate and candidates for women got together and started talking. And uh, not just that, but even before when they were recruiting. So the parties themselves were talking to women. So they got to see why women do run, why women don't run as well. And uh, all these women coming together and having, for example, um, election parties, uh, they started saying, well, even if we didn't get elected, how can we get more women involved? And that was really uh, what they thought of the best way to do it. They started with uh, their networks. So talking to those women that weren't sure they were going to run this time, maybe, oh, well, you know, maybe we could help you. Would you run next time? And with those direct contacts, we went on to the movie nights. When we saw people were coming out, we were not in red or orange phase, so we could still be uh, together. And uh, then we saw that people were willing to take time and physically move themselves to talk about politics. So people really had an interest. And then they were like, okay, we are gonna work on this campaign camp. So these amazing women uh, set up the campaign camp. Uh, the three presenters are Krista Cowling, Monique Leblanc, and Claire Kelly, and they're presenting each a different aspect of uh, what it is in campaign camp and what is a campaign. How do you run it? Who are you? Why do you want to run? So I'm, that was really the the kickoff. Yeah, those three women right there represent so much optimism and so much experience when it comes to politics in New Brunswick. It's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, and you know that Monique was an MLA elected, um, and Claire, her mother, ran uh, for office, and so she had a great role model right off the get-go, and if you talk to her, you see that bubbling energy, uh, such a positive person and a great person to work with in this group, and uh, Krista Cowling that we've heard of through La Bikery, all her social involvement and uh, active transportation, so I think... um, Speaking of Chris, we, we see those issues maybe that sometimes are on the back burner uh, when it comes to men, like they'll maybe have more an economical point of view, whereas women, we tend to see the social more, like women are more likely to volunteer, women are more likely to take care of elderly parents or children. So really, we think it takes women to represent women's interests. Can you talk a little bit more about democracy now as a as a kind of grassroots movement and and a little bit about you know the the one movie that I was able to come out to see that you guys showed I think was uh was a bit of a template for what you guys were trying to start which were movie night was it uh the one um the documentary about the four women running in the United States that was really great and I think grassroots is the key word here uh it's all volunteer based right now and uh even now though, we're just starting. So as I said, in September, it's going super fast. I joined in November 
um, and I was brought in really more uh, to give a framework to the organization. So run meetings and make sure that uh, we know what our goals are. We're gonna solidify our vision and our mission. Uh, these are things that are important as a group to define ourselves because right now what we're saying is we wanna amplify. We're amplifying women's voices. So uh, we're trying to find our voice through our campaign camp, through our current activities, um, but really we don't want to put ourselves forward. We want to put women forward and support them. Um, well, well we're kind of that, that backing team that you see in the movie, right? We do have some women that are going to run that are directly in our group, but we're really like those behind the scenes, those grassroots, we're recruiting, uh, we're getting resources for these women. Uh, right now it's all people-based resources, but eventually it could be financial resources. You know, you never know when someone's gonna come up. We're certainly open to that, to anyone listening. Uh, if you'd like to finance women running, uh, we can certainly find a way to make that work for you. And I think what, what really draws me to democracy now and this idea is that it's not a partisan idea, right? You're, you're not, a associated with a particular uh, level of government or a particular party system. This is really about just getting more women involved and vocal and, and active, not necessarily just as candidates, but like you said, like as part of the whole process. And ideally we would be in every single party. Um, New Brunswick recently passed a, a motion that would finance uh, votes for women or being worth more to a party than a uh, vote for a man. So are uh, things in place to try to encourage that, but we're not seeing it everywhere yet. And we're wondering why that is. And we think that's because there's a lack of support. Okay. Well, and I feel like, I mean, there's a lack of support, but New Brunswick is uh, old school as far as I'm concerned, right? And, and it needs to be broken. Um, and we did have a record amount of women uh, get into like get into politics this past year i can't remember if they were voted in or if it was just a record amount of women that ran do you remember it was mostly women that ran okay um i think in new brunswick we have about 12 uh mlas in on a total of 49 uh, could correct. be better i think <laughs> i think i think it is a record for new brunswick but it's still not where it needs to be <laughs> yes yeah, so totally free and we need to change things up and we are an old school province. We do need to get with the times. Uh, we don't even match up with the federal level of women uh, that are in office currently. Yeah, I think another thing too um, with, we're kind of like in this middle section here where the people that were really involved in politics are getting old and getting out of politics. And then there was that long span of people who don't care right and and then this generation like our age group now are starting to realize like i really do need to pay attention to this and it is really important that i at least vote or get involved in politics like i'm 38 and it took me until i was like 35 to be like whoa wait a second here like i really like like things here could use my voice or whatever it may be right Exactly. And I think that you touched on another good point, And that's something we want to do in the future as well is encourage more people to vote. Uh, right now, our campaign camp is focusing on the municipal level. And generally, you see that the highest voter turnouts are for the federal then goes provincial and municipal, we have the lowest rates sometimes I think it hovers around 30% of people that vote. And really, your vote at the municipal level of all three levels of government that I mentioned is the one that counts the most because less people vote. So your vote is actually worth more. Um, but people maybe don't understand exactly what it means to be a city councilor. What are the powers that they have? But the people that get voted in have friends that know the worth of knowing your councilor and they certainly use it. That's a really good point. I think there is that lack of knowledge among so many people as to the differences between those three levels of government and where those powers lie. And I know I, I'm always surprised at, at how little people understand those differences and what a poor job we as society have done in making people understand where that power lies and why we should be using our votes and using our voice. Like 30% voter turnout for municipal politics, just that just blows my mind. That's, that, that, there's so much that's not representative if only 30% of people are voting. And I think also if you educate women on this, um, they'll educate others. 
I truly believe women are the keepers of knowledge in our society and it's always been like this, uh, but that's not been emphasized in the last generations and it's something that should be brought back. Yeah. Um, are you working at all with uh, kind of the idea that Daniel Lin has going on with the people living in rural areas that can run for, for municipal government? Has that, any of that been talked about? We haven't talked about it directly. It's definitely on the radar. Right now we're focusing on Moncton, but since we're online for a campaign camp, people are participating that are living in more rural areas. I think eventually we would like to actually get out there, maybe host some um, house parties, like house get togethers, uh, so that people can see role models, can talk about it in, in vivo and uh, make a difference. Because once again, those smaller communities, that's where you can have the most impact mm -hmm. because of the lower population. Vote is worth more. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's also such a strange, spot in New Brunswick. I, I, I will say that I, I've brought it up before on uh, other episodes, but yeah, I live in what's called a local service district. So I kind of fall in this like no man's land <laughs> of political <laughs> sphere. And it's a, it's a very interesting time in New Brunswick politics, because I think that we are seeing some change and we're, I think we're going to see great things come out of what your group is doing. And I also think we are in we are obviously heading into this period of actual change in the way that our systems are set up here, municipally at least, and it's going to be very, very interesting in the next, you know, five to 10 years to see how things shift. I think we are, and our group is really riding that wave. And when it was put in place, it was because there's something behind it and we want to take advantage of that momentum. You know, it doesn't always come around, but it is here now. And, uh, if I can bring it back to campaign camp, we did have our first uh, our first session yesterday, which was, I'm just looking at the date, Tuesday, the 19th. And so we had about uh, 15 participants all together. Really a great turnout for us, uh, considering we didn't get as much time live with people as we would have liked. You know, we, we went straight into um, an online presence, virtual presence uh, quite quickly. So we're really encouraged to see all the interest. So here we go. I mean, yeah, <laughs> guys, the limit at this point. We're really, really enthusiastic about the numbers. Absolutely. Yeah. So That's if cool. if someone was like interested in finding out more information, what would they find if they started following your Facebook page? Well, we're just starting our Facebook. So that's been up for about two weeks. Okay. Uh, so right now it's a lot of information on Campaign Camp. We're also highlighting our presenters, Monique, Claire, and Krista. And uh, we're, we're gonna try to share some statistics on uh, local politics and uh, inspirational quotes by women. We have one on our Instagram uh, by Ruth Bader Ginsburg that we lost last year. Um, and so all of these information, we're putting together also a social media team. So they'll be looking out for local news uh, one of our long-term goals was even to establish a newsletter that would keep people in the know uh, about what's going on in New Brunswick at large. Uh, that's, of course, it's going to take a little more, little more people power than we have right now and some more pilot projects. But uh, if people want to follow us, there's certainly going to be more camps, I believe. And always just that people can reach out through Facebook get our support directly. We, we answer all our messages. Uh, we can, you know, if they're looking for someone to help with a campaign, for example, maybe we have some names uh, that'll come forward through our campaign camp this time around. Because not everyone that participates wants to be a candidate necessarily. Some of them are also supporting uh, other candidates. Okay. Is there any plans to do a second installment of the camp? Because by the time people hear and see this particular episode, those three sessions of this camp will have completed. Um, and I know we're getting kind of close to that May deadline for municipal elections, but I'm assuming there are plans to, to replicate and, and do other things like this. Yes, you are right. Uh, we do want to do more campaign camps. We'll have to see uh, with the format what's allowed during because of COVID. Uh, but definitely, eventually, we would like to do some in person. Uh, right now, it's based on an election, but we can certainly have discussions on other forms of camps that can be may maybe more general issues that can be run anytime during the year. But yes, campaign camp is really currently a central part of what Femocracy Now is doing. 
And I'd like to mention that there are uh, other similar movements that came about just around the same time. We've been in contact with a group in uh, New Brunswick. It's called Women Plus in Politics. And they also offer online, uh, online not camps, but uh, sessions to talk about the similar subjects that we, we do. So the role of the candidate, the campaign, uh, and the campaign it includes financing and everything. And what's interesting with them, they're making it available also on YouTube. So I would invite other people to also check out Women Plus in Politics, Fredericton. Uh, we have talked to them and met with them. And uh, we're pretty excited that, you know, it, they had the same kind of idea as us and to see how they're running things and inspiring each other and definitely work together in the future. And if we have more groups all around New Brunswick, well, why not make it, you know, a provincial movement yeah, just got absolutely. like little goosebumps at that. Again, yeah. I, love when, I love when that happens when you know that an idea, you know, it, it's time is here because it's bubbling up in various places at the same time. People are having these same conversations, obviously, without knowing, you know, one group's doing it here and one group's doing it there. But thankfully, with everything being online right now, it's that much easier than to connect those those dots and those movements. And that that is so exciting. Yes, and people are interested, like, for example, we started talking it to business and professional women, women of Greater Moncton. Um, we're really doing that push that, that idea to, to tell people here we are. Um, we're here to offer resources. We're also here to accept any resources that you can offer, um, especially with people's time. You know, we have uh, we just added a new actually uh, person who's going to be presenting and I can't think of her name right now, but she's a superstar in social media. And so we're really looking forward to it. If you give me a minute, I can find it. Um. <laughs> I think that New Brunswick is is finding itself, um, especially after you know the the past year that we had. New Brunswick is finding itself like on a lot of people's radar. Our housing market went through the roof. We were like number seven on the list of the fastest growing cities in Canada for 2020 as well. So I think a lot of what we're seeing is a lot of people like starting to a either come back home, b move here from places where maybe they were more political like you know what i mean somewhere where that was more involved in it and especially for women being more involved in politics and people are coming here or we're just all waking up and realizing like holy crap i i can make a change i can use my voice i can be a part of this um so how do i how do i get myself into being a part of it yeah just talk to us come on our facebook yeah. page. come on our instagram uh we have a gmail democracy at gmail.com send us a message we are there and the person's name i was looking for was natalie davison uh, uh, i oh, wondered yes. yeah <laughs> yeah there you go Meryl Mark oh, yes yeah well i know uh natalie is a very very uh keen follower of politics and also yes very skilled at communicating so that's going to be fantastic that's actually who i uh sat with when i was at your event so oh, excellent. and she's going to be offering your workshop for us um she just let us know so stay tuned for that on our facebook we'll certainly be adver advertising it soon um and uh she's also good with uh teaching people how to give an interactive workshop. And so uh, we have a lot to learn from her. Mm -hmm. So we mentioned the campaign camp. Maybe I'll just mention a little bit about what the sessions offered one, uh, one at a time. And so yesterday we had Krista Cowling who presented Get to Know the Role. And she was really talking about uh, not only what what uh, the responsibilities are because we know you have to be in meetings uh, you have to get informed she also said you know don't worry about knowing everything no one knows everything and women think tend to to want to know everything before they get involved and that that becomes a challenge because men don't have that uh, block in front of them 57 percent of uh, women, qualified women will choose to run versus 72 percent of men who feel they're not qualified to run will run anyways and so we need to break that mental barrier for women. Um, you know, you have the capacity and you don't, don't have to know everything. And as long as you're willing to learn and there's a lot of reading involved, um, but also just don't, don't read what you see and just take it as black and white. Think of the impact that everything has. You know, it might not be interesting to read about the redesign of a city grid, 
they, you know, think uh, maybe I can have more bike lanes in there. Maybe I can enjoy a stroll with my family in the city. Whereas now I feel like if I go out with my stroller, I might get hit by a car. You know, there's all these little ways to interpret things. The, uh, also, another thing she spoke of is the work atmosphere. So women will typically receive more harassment when they're running or when they're presenting. And like we saw in the, that movie, um, Knocking Down the House, I believe it was called, yes. um, women are scrutinized a lot more than men. And you know, you have to worry about your look more and people will comment, they'll always comment on your clothing and things like this that don't really matter and that aren't discussed for men, but that you are scrutinized for because you're a woman. Uh, so workplace harassment as well. We've all been in the workplace uh, and we know that it's around and it's internalized like a like you I grew up in the 90s you listen to old talk shows and you're like wow that's sexist like and it's you know it's gender it's offensive to gender and it's it's a really um antiquated way of looking at things and it's time to change and we think women have to be in those spaces uh to change things me myself coming from the radio um, industry. It was all men. I'm, I'm the only woman director. When I was directing radio, I was the only woman out of 10. And certainly some subjects came up that were inappropriate. Oh, man. So get to know the role yeah. with Krista. Yeah, <laughs> that that's, and that's very cool. Then with Claire Kelly, we're getting to know the candidates. So that's really essentially getting to know yourself and which parts of yourself you're going to amplify when you're on that stage, when you're on that mic, uh, how your personality is going to translate as a political statement. So that to me is one of the most in, in, interesting parts uh, of it all because it relates to yourself uh, and addressing all those doubts that you may have that I mentioned earlier that you shouldn't be running. Um, maybe no one's ever encouraged you to run and that's quite common for women not to be encouraged and even for the reaction to be shock or discouragement from people around you. So she was really clear about saying that everyone has a unique point of view and that is what is gonna being true to yourself it is what is what is going to help you win there you go got my mouth around that one <laughs> um so really interesting and if you know claire like when i listen to her talk i'm like oh my god i i want to follow you like you're so positive and uh intelligent and i just love everything that that she presents and she brings that really positive energy to our group that uh i really appreciate so get to know the candidates. That's going to be this Friday, so the twenty second. I guess maybe this will this will be on later on. Uh, and the last one will be on January twenty fourth, and that's going to be with Monique Leblanc. So she was an MLA. She was directly uh, involved. She's going to be talking about the campaign. So what does it take to run a campaign? Uh, first of all, you need a great team. Uh, you need, you know. Uh, also, you need financing, and we're trying to destigmatize also asking for financing. That can be something that's hard for people. I think people in general around money can be weird and uh, not want to ask. But you know, you can be waiting to pick up your kids in kindergarten and talk to parents, you know, from six feet away <laughs> um, that you're running. You know, that can be enough. And sometimes just talking about it, people will offer time they will offer money um traditionally for men you know that's been done through clubs like on the golf course but we're saying we don't need to go through all those traditional um ways anymore we we can find our own and not be afraid to to receive and be open to it and you know, once you know yourself, you can put yourself out there and be confident that if people vote for you, you're going to do a good job for them. I think it's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. um, and if we go back to uh, talking about the campaign, you'll also need a campaign manager, someone who's going to run everything and a lot of volunteers and, and uh, just to give you an idea financially, I just want to finish with that for a Counselor in Moncton, it's about $5,000 for a ward. And if you're running at large, it's about $20,000. Uh, I'm not sure what it is for a mayoral candidate. I'm guessing a little more mm -hmm. uh, because it, it is Moncton uh, at large, but probably similar to a counselor at large around the $20,000 mark. So that can be intimidating. 
but people will rally around you and people do believe in you and just listen to people around you that are encouraging you. And those are the people that are gonna stick with you and help convince others to vote for you as well. So, so happy that Monique Leblanc is with us. Um, with all of her experience, she's run two successful campaigns. And uh, I think uh, she's got a lot to teach uh, our, our campers. <laughs> <laughs> and just, just to clarify, when you say it's like 5,000 for a campaign for a ward, um, that type of thing, that's not like a fee people have to pay. That's what people say you should have to run your campaign. That's how much you're going to want to spend. No, I'm not right? sure if there's an, a small administration. No, I don't think Maybe, yeah. but I don't think there is. And uh, that's just, you know, for signs, um, hopefully you can yeah. pay your, your core people for their time uh, if it's possible, um, especially if you're running at large and you've got the, a bigger pot to, to go for. But uh, yeah, signs, transport, uh, with COVID, you know, it's important to have those um, security measures in place, make sure all the volunteers have access to some disinfectant and the masks and pens and we're disinfecting everything door to door. Uh, that's all really important things to, to look at. Excellent. Okay. Um, well, before we wrap up today, maybe social media links so uh, we can all start following you guys. Uh, uh, I know I follow you on Facebook, but you had mentioned Instagram as well. So I'm going to have to find that. <laughs> yes. Uh, so Facebook, that's Femocracy Now. For Instagram, it's Femocracy underscore now. Our Gmail is Femocracy at gmail.com. And Femocracy, we spell it F E M M O C R A C Y. Uh, and yes, we also have our event bright, but that might be a uh, run out. So if it's after the 24th of January, <laughs> you can't find us there, but the uh, event bright is where you can buy tickets, eventbrite.ca, search for campaign camp. And uh, that's where we are. And we're looking forward to anyone who wants to connect with us, you know, don't hesitate. Uh, we're here to facilitate whatever uh, in input you wanna have on politics here in New Brunswick. This is so, so inspiring and fantastic. Thank you so much for talking with us today. You're welcome. And once again, all women plus, please reach out to us. Absolutely. And we want to thank everybody for watching and listening to the show today. Uh, if you like today's episode, please feel free to leave us a review or like or a share is always welcome as well. Or as my children would say, smash that subscribe button. Yeah, smash it. <laughs> I love yeah. it. That's, that's the terminology these days. <laughs>